Hello, everybody. Good day to you all, and welcome to the 18th session of our YSBC Web Lecture Series. The topic of today's conversation is Transforming the Power of Sports for Social Change, with our speaker, Mr. Yohan Nogier, co-founder and managing director, Uno Sports Hub, and our moderator today is Mr. Crystal Sane, athlete, illustrator, and sports journalist. Mr. Yohan, former procurement manager of Rio 2016 Olympic and Paralympic Games, uh, he became a part of the UNUS network in 2017 while advocating about the social about the potential social outcome of sporting events. After a successful collaboration resulting in the signature of an agreement with Paris 2024 and the International Olympic Committee, the UNO Sports Hub was created. Our moderator today, Ms. Crystal, is a Lebanese athlete, sports photographer, and illustrator. She started her journey in journalism at the age of 16 and later joined the IOC Young Reporters Program to cover the 2014 Youth Olympic Games in China. She then covered the Rio 2016 Olympic Games and produced a comic titled Competing for a Change with Covers, which covers the story of three Arab female athletes who competed at the Olympic Games. In 2019, she was appointed by the IOC president to the IOC Communication Commission. At the same year, she covered the Doha 2019 World Athletics Championship as a photographer and will be in Tokyo 2020 to cover the Olympic event. We have a great uh, combination today and we look forward to hearing the story of the Yunus Sports Hub through Mr. Yohan. So without further delay, let us welcome Professor Mohamed Yunus for his opening remarks and start the conversation. Uh, Professor Yunus. Thank you, Zinat. I'm delighted to be with you again and this time with a very fascinating conversation with Yohan and Crystal. And welcome to all of you who are participating in it. Very special kind of conversation we will have today and two very uh, important uh, persons in this in the area of social business and sports. Uh, it's very strange the way uh, I got to meet uh, Iwan. I had no idea uh, who he was and what he was doing until I was invited to Rio for the Olympic. Uh, and I was given the task by the Olympic Committee to uh, be a torchbearer in that uh, Olympic torchbearer for the the U Olympic. So I was enjoying that. And while I was doing it, uh, I met this young person and who was uh, at that time manager for uh, procurement for the Rio Olympic. So that was quite a kind of surprise for me why this young man should be responsible for procurement. Procurement is a big issue and uh, it's a billion dollar uh, businesses that goes on into it uh, in each of the Olympic. So we saw him and uh, very impressed. And uh, in the meantime, during that session, uh, I got involved with the IOC talking about social business and uh, sports and so on. And I was invited to go to Paris to discuss that. And I saw lots of response in the social business idea from sports side. So when uh, time came, we thought, uh, is the Olympic over? And uh, um, he, Ivan will be available for uh, our Grameen uh, GCL. Uh, and we hired them for GCL and started doing this all exploration part. And that led to many other issues. And he became a sort of a, a blind man's stick for me in the sports world to touch the sports because I have no idea where the one is, uh, what the sports world is. He took me around and showed me all the point. And gradually he came to the point of creating an independent entity by itself. It's called Eunice Sports Hub. And you know, the sports hub is the one that uh, he's representing. He's the founder and the uh, now the CEO of the uh, you know, the sports hub and all the activities that he is doing. So it's wonderful stories to tell the, uh, in the short period, the accomplishments he has made, and it's a very important discussion. And then uh, comes Crystal, another wonderful uh, discovery for us. Uh, we never heard of uh, a sports person mixing with journalism, writing, and all kinds of things he does. Uh, it's a very unusual combination she has. Uh, so she is the one who will be um, have a conversation with uh, Yuan, and we are looking forward to this conversation. Uh, welcome, uh, Crystal. This floor is yours. Now it's your show. You take it from here. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Yunus, and thank you, uh, Yunus Center, for inviting me to be part of this session. It's a pleasure also, Yuan, to be uh, 
with you in this discussion. We've met uh, a long time ago and uh, I'm happy to be here. Um, I'm going to introduce myself. So, yes, as you said, I have many hats. <laughs> yeah, yes, you do. Yeah, I'm an athlete, uh, illustrator, and sports journalist. Um, I first met you, Professor Yunus, in 2018 uh, in Buenos Aires at the Youth Olympic Games. And I was part of the IOC Young Leaders Program. It's the International Olympic Committee Young Leaders Program. And uh, when I heard you over there, your words mainly uh, clicked because I had like similar story. And when you were saying that start small and give back to the community and social business can make a change. Um, I looked back at myself when I was 16 because I tackled the problem, uh, which was uh, the lack of media coverage in my country for my sport, which is oh. athletics. And that's how it started. I didn't know that as, at one day I would make it as a social business. But uh, I started doing the job as an athlete, being a journalist at the same time to shed the light on these athletes who weren't receiving any coverage. And this was like the main problem that I tried to tackle over the years. And after 10 years of working in this field, uh, I met uh, Eunice Sports Hub, the family of Eunice Sports Hub. Uh, and it was part of uh, the uh, Social Business Champions, a program that you guys did. And I turned my page, which is called Track and Field Society, into a social business after 10 years for working, uh, doing the job without thinking of a long term and sustainability or anything. So it was due to uh, your support that I managed to turn it into a social business. And uh, today we're going to cover this topic, how we can include sports and social business together to, to make an impact in this world and to work towards uh, social change because sports has, has a power. And as Nelson Mandela used to say, sports has the power, power to change the world. And we've seen it in many examples throughout, especially the Olympic games, how, how it, it was um, a mean for social change and social justice, especially lately with everything that is happening in the world it is something very powerful that we have to use smartly. And social business, as I defined it, because Johan, you're going to be defining it in a few, <laughs> is in the middle between an NGO and a business. So it's mainly tackling a problem to give back to the society and solve it and continue to prospect in it and as a, uh, on, on the long term. So... Um, today in this session with Johan, uh, you're the co-founder of uh, Eunice Sports Hub. Um, we're going to define social, the social business concept. We will provide you with very concrete examples of social business and sports and provide you with the vision behind sport and social business and how it can be achieved so that more people can join us in this journey. So today, Johan, we have people coming from the sporting world and people coming from the social business world. Um, how do you define social business or how can you remind us about what is social business for people who come from sports? Thank you, Christelle. And uh, first of all, before I even answer your question, uh, a huge, huge thanks to Unicenter for putting this together. It, uh, it's a fantastic time on, uh, on a monthly basis to... Uh, and to reach uh, everybody else. Um, I would say that uh, I, I was looking at the, at the audience list before, and there seems that there's a lot of people that we know from the social business sector, but also some, some, some new people that are joining us more from the, the sport aspect. So of course, uh, uh, maybe a, a bit of, as you said, Crystal, a bit of a, of a reminder about, uh, about, let's say the, the, the idea, the, even behind the behind the you know, sports hub. So of course, uh, as you all know, Professor Yunus uh, uh, has created this uh, uh, this social business concept and defines it as a non-dividend uh, organization to solve a social or environmental problem. Uh, and when you look in the in the sense of the development of social business today, social business is a real movement in more you know, than 100 countries and and uh, uh, and many uh, many hundreds organizations. 
that are uh, working towards uh, the direction of solving issues using business techniques. So if we look into what Unisports Hub role is inside this rich ecosystem, it's nothing else, nothing more than putting this network, this knowledge and this concept at the service of the sport industry. We know that social business is sector agnostic. It works in all the industries, but we also found out that sport is a very much of a, of a fertile ground for social business to flourish. So the idea behind uh, uh, the Unisports Hub is basically to promote uh, these, uh, these social business concept and bring the word to the sport world, but also to help them implement. Because a, a lot of time when, uh, uh, you know, when we speak about social business at sport conferences, or especially when Professor Yunus does it, it may interest people. So at some point comes the next question, which is, okay, but how do we get involved? And that's also how the Unisports Hub come up by uh, putting all of this network at the disposal of the sports uh, industry. So, so this is in a, in a few words what, uh, uh, what there is behind the Unisports Hub and more generally how we, we connect sport and social business. Uh, thank you, Johan. Uh, uh, as, as you said, it's like sports is a business in itself. There is, there is a lot to do in it. And the core, if you want, the core element of sports are the athletes. So, and we know that not, not all of uh, the athletes can uh, have like a, a constant revenue or they can sustain a career, especially at a competitive level, because we have like the elite who, who have the support of the government, their national Olympic committees or sponsors. But we have the majority of the athletes who come in after the elite or even some of them are elite who cannot finance their own career or who look for part-time jobs or full-time jobs to, to be able to do both. Uh, how can they profit from uh, social business to finance their own career for the future? Um, I think that even, uh, even before answering this, I think that taking one step uh, back, <clears throat> What we're talking about here is solving one very specific problem, which is in that case, the problem of, of athletes financially struggling. Mm. Um, more generally, I think that social business can be used to solve any kind of problem that exists in the sport industry. If, a lot of time we are you know, using the, the narrative of sport as being a fantastic, uh, 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 driver for social change. And this is very true. And we are coming back to that later. But we also need to remember that, you know, sport as any other industry has its own problem, whether it is, you know, racism in stadiums, whether it is um, uh, gender equality, sport is definitely not best in class when it comes to gender equality. And all the, the problem that you are touching, which is wealth distribution, basically, because yeah. what we're saying is that you have a handful of athletes earning millions and a lot of the other having difficulties in, in financing their, their career. So to answer maybe your question, I guess that the whole point about social business is trying to find a structural way to solve these problems. And when it comes to uh, uh, athlete uh, empowerment, economic empowerment, um, there are many different ways and, and ways that actually exist since decades in the in the social business ecosystem you know and one of the very very uh, 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 simple yet effective one is entrepreneurship uh, so basically what we're trying to bring to the table is that uh, uh, of course an athlete that needs to to uh, you know to uh, to train for five six hours a day or more depending on the sport uh, they will not necessarily be uh, have a good fit with you know nine to five, nine to six, nine to seven p.m. job. Uh, entrepreneurship is actually not only a great way that fits with the athlete agenda, but it's also uh, uh, fits with the way they 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 approach life. You know, they uh, you know going from A to B and sorting things out as as time goes. So, uh, let's say the idea behind social business in that specific sense is how do we make sure that every athlete as early as possible when they 
when they learn how to be an athlete, how do they become an entrepreneur as well? And how do they see their sport career as an entrepreneurial journey? Because from that moment, if you provide you know, the, uh, the infrastructure, if you provide the knowledge, the tools, uh, and all the environment that goes to help the athletes become an entrepreneur as well as they become athletes, then you cut a lot of the problems at the root which are linked to, uh, uh, to financing a career, but also to transitioning a career, uh, uh, yes. you know, because uh, if, you start, uh, uh, if you start a business while you're still competing, then you know that you always have, you know, something, and, uh, uh, something to, uh, to not only uh, finance yourself, but also to, to, uh, uh, to spend your time on. So uh, basically some of these solutions, we're bringing it through programs that we are delivering to uh, different organizations, the International Olympic Committee, the French Development Agency, and so on and so forth. Basically what we're providing, we're providing entrepreneurship program for athletes, providing them the skills, the tools, the access to connections, uh, uh, sometimes even to funding so that they can start their business and, uh, and uh, solve their own situation. Yes, true. And especially in, uh, in an athlete's career, it's, uh, it's very short term and, and athletes should think about their transition later on. And social business or thinking like a business is a way forward, especially sometimes also when, uh, when their career is interrupted brusquely by, uh, by an injury or something. They, it, when we're, while working in parallel on something else, having this motivation to do something instead of uh, just losing everything they've been working on uh, is also a kind of motivation. And I know from myself, when I achieve something outside of sports, it's reflect on my uh, competition on, on the field of play as well. So I get like the same motivation on working towards the goal and also working towards achieving something in, uh, in the business world. It's, it's similar. So so yeah, Absolutely. I think uh, I think athletes should start, regardless of their level, they should start thinking about how how can I build my own business, especially elite athletes who already have a brand. They are, they are already established and have a brand out there. Um, Johan, there is there is also the component around the athletes and uh, how social business is used not only for professional athletes but as a mean for social change and. As an example, we have the International Olympic uh, Committee Young Leaders Program, who, who mainly the, the International Olympic Committee gave young people the opportunity to uh, apply their projects and uh, request projects to, and fund them to actually make a change in their own communities. And this came from the idea of a social business. So trying to find a problem in their community and solve it through sports. And we've seen different projects tackling the environment, uh, gender equality, uh, even uh, education through sports and many other SDGs. Um, based, based on this example, uh, how can we leverage social business, um, use social business to leverage this power of sport in the world and not only specifically to professional sports, but to really make an impact in the environment we live in? Absolutely. Uh, yes, Christina, and you're really right on, uh, on mentioning the, the International Olympic Committee Young Leaders Program. Uh, which is a fantastic example of how we, you know, we, we were discussing just before about some of the issues that we can uh, tackle in sports with social business, but there's also a lot of leverage that we can use from the power that sport has in the society. And these young leaders all around the world uh, uh, from the International Olympic Committee uh, have really much understood that. And the idea is to, uh, from our side, is to support them uh, uh, with you know the social business twist, with the social business skills, so that they can actually go in their community and solve the problems that you mentioned, whether they are environment based, whether they are diabetes based, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, uh, more generally, if you again, if we step one step back, if we take one step backward, uh, solving issues through sport is something that can be extremely powerful in the sense that. Uh, you know, uh, and it's, uh, you, you, you were right earlier to mention Nelson Mandela's uh, 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 quote, 
uh, of uh, sport has the power to change the world. What we like to see in there is not only this sentence, because we do believe that sport indeed has a very strong power, but the idea is how do we identify this power? Hmm. And how do we use it as a vehicle so that we actually can create change? And that's where social business become a very, very efficient tool. You know, uh, it's not only about what, I, what I'm meaning here is not, it's not only about, you know, sending some footballs to some poor kids in, to some poor countries and say that it will change their life because this is, this is not how it happens. It takes a bit more of planning and a bit more of understanding of how the sport power works and especially what is this power of sports if you look into if you make a list of these powers i mean there's a few that really uh, uh, you know uh, will be highlight highlighted the first one is the economic power uh, sport is one of uh, i mean it's a big industry it's 1.3 trillion us dollar business uh, uh, if you take that at, at the um, at the scope of one event the olympics it's a 7 billion euros project uh, in Paris, this is more or less, give or take, the, 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 the budget that we're talking about. In comparison, this is the, the amount of money, uh, this is the, more or less the budget of Paris for an entire year. So we will spend for a five weeks event uh, the same amount of money that there is for one year budget to the whole city of Paris. But what we need to remember is that this money only exists because of sport. So it's not money that could have gone to something else. It's money that comes from sport because of the sport industry. So actually what it is, it is a fantastic opportunity that we have and a great honor that we have to get the games organized in, in, in Paris and in France. So how do we maximize, you know, how do we use this economic power? Well, this is one of the examples that I like to give is the ESS 2024 program, which basically think about the following. We have 7 billion euros and all of this money goes to supplier of product and services for the organization of the games. How do we maximize within this, you know, within this pot of money, the amount that goes to social business suppliers? Because they will not only bring you the product or service that you need. So for example, the food for the athlete, but they will also do it in a way that comes with a social advantage. For example, uh, they will work only with refugees or long-term unemployed people or they will only source locally grown products, see? So you will have the exact same product, which is the food, but a complete different result in, term, in the social and environmental terms. So this is the kind of thing that we're trying to do to you know, leverage the economic power as well. And there are many, many other pro, uh, you know, uh, 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 powers. Uh, if, you look into, uh, if you look into the power of, um, of attraction that sport has, you know, yes. Not a lot of sector can say that, you know, half the planet is in front of the TV screen to see something, you know, the sport is one of the only sector. So how do we do to, to use that? And what can it translate into? Um, so one of the application of that, what we, well, we like to call this attract, attraction power of sport is what happens in Ivory Coast. So uh, the Agora, is a sport center made out of recycled container in one of the most, uh, uh, in one of the poorest districts of Abidjan, which is the capital of Ivory Coast. And basically, because it is a very poor district, this is one of the only sport infrastructure. So it attracts a lot of young people, as you can imagine. Uh, these young people go there, but actually I was mentioning that uh, this center is made out of recycled containers. And these recycled containers are all host of one social business that provide access to micro business incubation, affordable healthcare services, affordable eye care services. So basically the young people go in the center to do sport, to play sport, but then they are exposed to a lot of things that were, they were not really exposed to before. And what is best is because it is operating as a social business, each one of these container has a business model, which means that they make a, a bit of profit. This profit can be, can be used to pay for rental uh, of the center, and then the center operates self-sustainably itself. So you see, here again, we are able to use that attraction power that sport has to bring the young people, use a social business technique, 
and then provide access to many more things, whether it is education, you know, incubation of business, uh, micro uh, uh, finance uh, inclusion, etc., uh, uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Um, so these are, let's say, two examples maybe uh, on how we can use this very particular power that sport has to be bringing, uh, uh, you know, social change in uh, in uh, the life of people. Yeah, just to, to recap a bit what you said, um, for Paris 2024, uh, mainly you, uh, you have the money, so you thought about how to use the money in an efficient way to give back to the community. So, for example, in, instead of getting food from a very fancy place or whatever, you know, the usual, uh, <laughs> usual things that happen, you go, for example, to farmers who are in need and get, for example, the products from there. So just to give like, uh, like an example. And in, in Agora, you use the attraction to attract people to the center and have like this uh, circle of life combining different aspects and go repeating uh, on and on. Uh, from from other from other perspectives, if we go to the main problem, uh, and for someone, for example, for an individual and not a company who is who wants to start their uh, their business through sports, and if they recognize, for example, a social issue, how what is your advice for these people to how to start their social business if they identify the problem, a social problem already, and how to merge it into sports? Uh, I guess it also depends uh, who this person or individual is and who, uh, which organization he or she represents. But I guess, you know, there is always a few rules uh, uh, to, uh, to get started is, uh, is uh, and, and that's something that uh, it's not an answer uh, from me. It's actually Einstein that said that. He <laughs> said, it, when, uh, when uh, a person asks me a question, I spend 99% of the time thinking about the question and 1% of the time thinking about the answer. Uh, and I feel that this is really much when we, when we translate that into, uh, into problem solving and into, uh, into business, it really is about understanding the problem. This is really the key uh, become, because from the moment uh, uh, the problem is very much understood, there is the, the solution actually becomes uh, uh, just obvious. Uh, so I think that this is one very important thing uh, and there are many, uh, you know, different quotes from different uh, uh, people, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 from the startup scene, which is also uh, bec uh, become uh, uh, fall in love with uh, the problem and not with the solution that you have to offer. So, so that's I think that, that this is one of the main uh, aspect would be, of course, uh, 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 knowing the problem by heart. Uh, starting small is the second one, which is also obvious and, and comes back a lot. But I think that. Uh, uh, most of the, the successful entrepreneur, and, and in particular, if we take the example of Professor Yunus, starting small has always been, uh, you know, uh, uh, what uh, uh, guarantees success in the sense that if we are able to solve one person's problem, then there is high chances that, you know, uh, other people that encounters this problem, even in other parts of the world, uh, can, be, uh, can be addressed in this way. Uh, and finally, I would say the last the last thing that I would say is is find the right channel. And as I was mentioning, it depends a bit also uh, who the person represents. You know, like if uh, uh, if that person that you're referring to is an athlete, uh, then at you know Sports Hub we have many different uh, athlete entrepreneurship programs. So if the, that person would have more of a of a, of a, of a so would like to start a social business with a focus on Africa. We have a, a program with the French Development Agency uh, to do so. If this is more to start a profit-based uh, 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 business just to finance uh, the career or the post-career, then we may be looking more into uh, you know program that we're doing with the International Olympic Committee. If the person that needs help is more of an NGO, we also have uh, 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 we are also uh, starting to uh, 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 to create a program which is. Uh, uh, which aims at helping NGOs to transform themselves into social business. So there are many different, let's say, uh, uh, points of contact. But uh, in any case, the, the, the first thing that they should do is just uh, get in touch. 
I'm happy that you tackled the, the NGO because a lot of people, when I explain what is a social business, they always refer to it as an NGO. So what is the difference between an NGO and a social business just for people to have a clear idea of the difference between the both? Oh, I mean, traditionally, I mean, it, it's mainly linked to the to the model in which they operate. Uh, uh, and uh, I would say that most of the people, most of the audience are, are some of the best experts in social business in the world. So I'm not speaking here as an expert, but rather under their control. <laughs> uh, but basically, it's it's mainly linked to the to the way they get uh, they get financed. So NGO will rather look into a, a charity model and a, you know a grant model when a social business will have a self sustainable model based on, on, on an actual business model. Uh, do you think, uh, following your experience working with the International Olympic Committee and other entities, do a big sporting uh, sporting organizations are looking into social business, or do you think they are still uh, taking the old business mindset and working in it? Um, I, I think that generally. I mean, our experience has been that the social business, I mean, you know, advocating about social business excites them a lot in the sense mm -hmm. that it allows them to reach the same objective, which is a social uh, or environmental objective, but in a more economically efficient way. Um, because, of course, as you know, in a social business, you know, a dollar, you know, you know, Professor Amos quote, you know, in, 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 uh, in charity, a uh, uh, dollar has only one life, but in social business, it has endless lives. Um, so I guess that it is always something that excites them um, for two reasons. The first reason is, as I mentioned, the economic efficiency, because with the same amount of money, we can do many more activities. But it's also, I think, something that uh, uh, is very beneficial for them when I think about sport governance entity um, so that they can reflect on what is their purpose? What is it that they are here for? So when you think about, of course, an organization, I will take any example like the International Federation of Volleyball, where they're here to organize the volleyball organization around the world so tournaments you know uh, uh, teams etc cetera, etc cetera. but when you know when when it's about for example beach volleyball uh, or volleyball what what is it for example that beach volleyball stands for it beach volleyball stands for a clean beach you know like <laughs> otherwise there's no there's no not even a place for for, uh, for beach volleyball so from that moment where you know, sport organization, sport governance body understand, you know, like what is their place in the society beyond the, the very, you know, practical aspect of organizing event, etc. Uh, this becomes an interesting uh, discussion with social business because how are we supporting them to move away from, you know, co what we call corporate social responsibility and which is just, okay, I am doing that. And then on the side, I would just do the minimum to, uh, to be, uh, you know, to, to actually change and say, okay, I can use the exact same amount of money, but actually create a business to eradicate a problem that I'm standing for. So I feel that, that this is for us the, the, the main source of, of happiness is when you know, we, we see that we are actually shift the, um, the, the mindset of people from we are just doing that because you know this is something that we need to do as part of the business to actually this becomes a real asset and we are uh, we are transitioning and, and, and using a social business way to do it. We've, we've discussed so far how um, social business can how sports can uh, combined with social business can have an impact on the wider world or if you want uh, have a social impact and we discussed if, um, in the athletes part uh, how social business can help sports directly um, how now how can sport, uh, social business help these organizations in itself you talked about efficiency what what else uh, can uh, social business contribute to these orga sporting organizations especially now after you know, after the COVID uh, situation and uh, the drop that we see, we've seen uh, economically in the world in the past year? Uh, I guess, 
I, I think the, 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 the answer to this question is, is uh, at the same time, pretty simple in the sense uh, that it, it brings a different model. We're, we're not saying that the charity model is, is wrong and is bad. Mm. Uh, you know, they do a fantastic job. Uh, and you have thousands and thousands and thousands, especially in the sport for development sector, thousands of organizations doing a fantastic job. You know, they are, uh, uh, they know their beneficiaries. They are every day on a daily basis with them. Uh, they uh, bring them support. They bring them a lot of time, their investment, their stress as well. They know how to influence community locally. They are deeply rooted with them. So there is nothing wrong with NGOs. What we are saying is that social business offers them a model that has a few advantages. So we are advocating to look into that. Um, because if you look at the way that traditionally, you know, charity operates, uh, there is one first problem, which you have mentioned, you know, with the, uh, with, uh, with the crisis like COVID, a lot of the financer in the charity, you know, model are, you know, money is getting scarcer and scarcer. So it's, it, you know, there is a problem of continuity. A lot of projects have needed to stop because there was no uh, money anymore mm. due to COVID. Then the second problem, which social business can help is to, uh, uh, to counter the effect of bad resource allocation, because when you look into charity and social business, you may think, okay, it's easier on the very short term to find 100,000 euro to finance my project through charity. And it may be easier. But if you look onto the medium term and the long term, all of these system needs a fundraiser, it needs an impact manager, it needs a lot of people to report. It needs... So these are all of the, let's say, uh, uh, resources that are allocated to the system itself. It does not create a necessarily a value to the beneficiary. It is a system to, you know, to just uh, 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 measure and validate, you know, the system itself. So basically what we're doing, we are fundraising to pay the fundraiser. I mean, at least a part of it. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's a funny model. And then finally, maybe even on a more, let's say, conceptual aspect, when you look into, uh, uh, when you look into charity, there, you have a lot of these organizations that are getting very good at getting grants. Uh, mm. And the reason why they are getting very good at getting grants is because they are adapting their activities in function of the grants which means that they could have initially a very noble cause uh, and a very noble mission, but step by step, they're drifting away from it because just because this is not where the money is. And you know, money comes with condition and they need to fulfill conditions. So they adapt what they do in function of where the money comes from. So there is more generally and more conceptually a risk of mission drift. Uh, so social business, because you do not need, uh, uh, you know, uh, this external input uh, uh, somehow. When you are a real social business, then there is no, you're, you're, you're not taking this risk. The great thing about that, I mean, we're, we're of course, uh, 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 not reinventing the wheel here. You have fantastic projects that are already doing that. And I invite you, uh, all, all the audience, to look into projects such as uh, uh, Skadistan, which is, for example, they are selling very high quality shirts uh, in, uh, in Europe. So in, uh, in skating shops uh, to finance, uh, to finance uh, uh, skating school for young girls in Afghanistan to provide education to young girls in, Afga in Afghanistan through uh, skating. Um, in the same way you have projects like, uh, uh, like um, Amigos del Mar, in Colombia, in Tierra Bomba, which is basically using uh, recycled plastic from the beach to create surf spare parts. And with this money that they are doing, uh, that they are uh, generating through, uh, through the sale of these surf spare parts, they are also financing uh, an informal schooling system for uh, dropout kids. So, you know, you have already this example existing. What we are trying to do at Unisports Hub is we are trying to make that the norm, 
to train, to, we are training to, uh, uh, to make sure that all the NGOs understand, uh, 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 you know, that they are already doing a great job and understand that they have an alternative, which is to, uh, uh, to also develop social business models in the, in the sense of what they are doing. Uh, thank you, Johan. Actually, uh, I remember when I joined the UNESCO Sports Hub and the Social Business Champions, uh, Amy used to tell me that don't look where you are working to get the money. Try to think outside ideas that are maybe not related directly, but as you said, for example, uh, t-shirts are sold in Europe to, to fund in Afghanistan. So, so we don't have to stick to one location or, for example, like the business to, to be like we deliver this product and we're getting our money from this product. So it's like the variety of, of resources that we can think about when it comes to social business and how to find the money, because that's uh, one of the questions that, uh, that come to mind. OK, I have my, my idea. I have my project. I have this problem that I want to solve. And then how can I get the money or where to find the money? So, and here starts the brainstorming of ideas, how to find the money. Um, Johan, in this no, no, case- Absolutely, absolutely. And, and you know, and this is a very good comment that you're making here, Christelle, because this is just the application of very simple concepts that exist in the, you know, in the business industry. In the, you know, in the, these are just business techniques that are, uh, you know, used by thousands and thousands of companies out there. And somehow we never thought that they could be applied to, uh, you know, to, uh, to organization doing some good. We thought that the only model to, uh, to, do, to do good was to uh, take money from rich people. And, you know, so, so mm. this, is, uh, this is actually something that is important. Uh, 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 you know, any business techniques uh, that, you know, we are using in the traditional, of course, in the, in the, in the framework of the law, right? <laughs> but any... Uh, you know, business technique is something that can be used for, for social business to develop and for former NGO to, you know, transform into social businesses. Uh, it's interesting that you also mentioned about uh, the NGOs and that's the question that I asked you before and how uh, they are looking for sustainability. So one of the main component of social business is to try to think long term and how to regenerate money to have this circle unstoppable uh, between pandemics, between anything that can happen uh, during uh, uh, <laughs> in the real life. Um, Johan, I want, to, I want to ask you, what's the difference between social business, because we talked a lot about social business and how it can have an impact on society and all these, and sports for development, because these are two terms that are when you think about them, that they are related. So what is the difference between the two? Well, uh, I would say that they are not on the same uh, register in the sense that sport for development is basically uh, what we call the sport for development sector is generally all these organizations that are trying to create solutions using sport as a tool. So mm -hmm. that's, I would say, the general framework, the general spectrum then social business can, can place itself within the spectrum as all of these organizations that do it in a self-sustainable way, right? Using, you know, the principles of social business. So I think that uh, uh, it's not that there is a difference between two. I think that social business is an option for any sport for development organization. And uh, so, so any organization that is starting can become a social business or any organization that already exists and that is a, a today an NGO can transform into a social business. It doesn't mean that they become a social business from one day to another, because of course, you know, they have, uh, 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 they have salaries to pay, they have, uh, you know, uh, uh, they have a cost to, uh, 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 to cope up with, but that means that they can start the transition step by step. Any euro that they would manage to create themselves through uh, the generation of, of business model will be a, new, a euro that they won't have to, to fundraise for. So it is not necessarily something that happens overnight. It can take, you know, uh, a few months, a few years sometimes, but this is within very, uh, very uh, healthy because it, you know, uh, 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 it's freedom from this 
constraint of always uh, 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 going to uh, go and ask money for the reason that I mentioned before, which which can cause problem, whether it is because of continuity, because the resources are going scarce, because of it, uh, because uh, of resource allocation, uh, because it's actually costful and costly to have a, 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 a charity model, and uh, because of the risk of mission drift. Okay, um, this relates to our current situation in Lebanon, for example, because we're going through an economic crisis and uh, you know the sports, sports industries, like their last, last, last uh, thing that they're going to think about is sports right now. So the, we have this, uh, always this answer that we can't find money, we can't find money. So how, how can we translate this idea of social business into even local federations and not only international federations who have the budget and who have who have this um, mindset and uh, they have the resources they have the power to do something to to small local uh, organizations who don't have maybe the resources or who are trying to find for ways to finance um, or market themselves what what how can we start if you want, not as individual, but as small local organizations, where, where do we start if you want to really make a change in this, uh, in this uh, aspect? I, I think that you actually already gave the answer in your question. You, it is really a mindset. Mm. Uh, it's, it's really a, a mindset matter. Um, when you start a project, any kind of project, it can be very you know, convenient to just ask somebody else for the money. It takes less time if you find this money if you find somebody that is willing to give this money uh you know uh, uh against you know a few reports and a few uh a few uh, measurements and stuff then it is easier i think it takes a bit longer and that that's you know we come back to the explanation i was giving before to you know on the long term and the, on the medium term it is you know uh, it is better to involve a bit of time at the beginning and start small and operating a model that is self-sustainable because from the moment that it is self-sustainable and that you reach, that you, you can solve the problem of one person, two person, three person, then you can solve mm. the problem of everybody because you have found that hack that will make that you, know, you will be able to, uh, uh, to, uh, to implement it uh, uh, and scale it. So I think that you know, th this is the only advice that I would give is really about the mindset. St take a bit more time at the beginning to solve the problem in a self-sustainable way. And then you have these three, uh, you know, uh, 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 pieces of advice that I, I gave earlier with, you know, uh, spending time to understanding the problem, starting yes. small, um, and of course, finding the right track to, uh, to request for help, uh, which are also very valid in this, uh, in this sense and in this case. Uh, thank you, Johan. I'm actually not gonna accept this, <laughs> the answer of we don't have the money. <laughs> I'm gonna be <laughs> replying with try to find your own money <laughs> for the local federations. Uh, I think we have covered a lot today. Uh, and as we promised since the beginning, we've covered the, the definition of sports and social business, the concept of it, how it functions. Uh, we've provided concrete examples from international organizations and also individuals uh, from the globe. Uh, IOC, Paris 2024, Aroga, and uh, Agora and the Ivory Coast. And uh, we've put like the vision of how to uh, achieve uh, uh, sports development through social business. Uh, I would like to thank you once again, uh, Johan and uh, Eunice Sports Hub, also for my, my, also my uh, personal initiative, but also Eunice uh, Sports Center and uh, Professor, uh, Professor Eunice for, uh, for having this conversation today. And I hope for the attendees that uh, they will leave the session with, fully equipped with what is social business, how can they use it for, uh, to tackle sports issues uh, uh, even uh, social issues and uh, to go outside to, to leave this session and really have an impact in the world and use combine both sports and social business to to make this 
world a bit better than it was yesterday. <laughs> and I hope you all benefited from the advice of Johan and from our experiences to really start small and start somewhere to make uh, an effective change. So thank you all. And I'm gonna pass it to Zinat to conclude the session. Uh, uh, Zinat. Thank you, Vistel. <laughs> thank you, Johan. Uh, thank you very much. Um, it has been a great conversation and um, thank you for touching on so many topics. I think um, um, some, of the, you know, some of our audience members may be wondering how sports and social business can link. And I'm sure after this conversation, many of your questions are answered. Um, thank you for addressing all of these important questions to Crystal and Yohan. Um, from our end, as you know, this is our Wise BC Web Lecture Series. Uh, we want to communicate through these uh, sessions to our students of the Wise BC Universities, of which we have 19 now. And a lot of universities have, you know, sports is a big part of universities and globally. So if our Wise BC students or academics watching are interested to pursue on social business and sports, please do connect to Yohan and the you know, Sports Hub. They're always um, there to help you and I'm sure many, through uh, the sports hub and the support of all our colleagues, uh, maybe many social business will pop out of um, uh, through this. So uh, I hope this uh, lecture adds, acts as a launching board for this and we can get many more social business in sports uh, involving young people in the future. So thank you very much um, for being a part of this lecture. And we look forward to having you all in our um, social business day, which is uh, another big event coming up very soon. From June 28th to, to July 2nd, we'll be having our social business day. Like every year we have um, our program, this is our gala event. Um, which is happening in June. And for the first time, it's going to be, uh, you know, a, a five days of events um, that we are on, going to be doing virtually and um, some physical sessions and live sessions are going to be held in uh, some universities in Uganda and Kampala in Uganda. So uh, I welcome all of you to join them. They're going to be live streamed. You're going to be able to watch them through our Facebook channel, uh, Facebook, social media. Uh, you'll be having, you'll be seeing more information about registration, the sessions that are happening who's speaking on our you know center facebook page and um, our social media uh, so um, thank you very much i i look forward to seeing all of you in those events now i kindly request mr aziz to play the slideshow for that mr thank you <laughs>